Joe, what's up guys? So I'm on my way to work, which inspired me to talk about what I'm gonna talk about. And that is stress. Stress, man. A lot of people I work with, a lot of people I know don't deal with stress in a healthy way. They don't understand the impact stress has on your physiology, on your bio functions. It's not just a psychological issue. It is very much physiological. Things happen to your biology when you're stressed, which in a stressful situation, a life or death situation, getting you away from harm or danger isn't a bad thing, but when the stress is chronic, it becomes a big issue. I want to start by talking about the stress response, the science of stress. The science of stress. See, stress is a evolutionary response. It's something that we cultivated over hundreds of thousands of years. Throughout that time, some behaviors some adaptations changed, some stayed the same, you know, depending on whether they were useful or not, whether it made a difference in our um, preservation. And the stress response is something that stayed with us. And for good reason. You see, when we were a bit lower on the food chain and a predator was attempting to turn us into prey, and our nervous system picked up this threat. The stress response will happen, which is the hypothalamus communicating to the pituitary, communicating to the adrenal glands. Okay, your nervous system and your endocrine system communicates, releasing what's called stress hormones. The two uh, main ones, cortisol and adrenaline. This is what happens when you're stressed. Now, adrenaline will raise your blood pressure, make you breathe more shallow yet faster in an attempt to redistribute oxygen-rich blood from parts of your other parts of your body to your limbs to help you run faster, jump higher, give you that extra fucking 15, 20 seconds of running, give you that extra six inches to jump cortisol is released which amongst many things um, um, uh, um, supplies the bloodstream with a lot more glucose than usual this is to um, this is to supply your body with more energy glucose is one of the primary sources of energy um and after the threat is gone, after that glucose is used up during fighting or fleeing, then it's all good. But here's the thing, here's the issue. Your body, your nervous system is deeply ingrained response. Doesn't know the difference between a damn lion chasing you and somebody cutting you off in traffic or getting into an argument or getting a, a bill with the red letters on it. Your, your body doesn't know the difference. It's all life or death. And when somebody cuts you off in traffic, the stress response kicks in, adrenaline, cortisol is released into your bloodstream. Okay, you get to work, realize you got a large work uh, workload in front of you. Adrenaline, cortisol is released. Dealing with disrespectful people at the job. Same thing, on and on and on and on. Okay, and this is an issue because you have to realize that when you're stressed out, your body redistributes energy from very important biological processes like um, um, it redistributes energy from your digestive system from your immune system okay um, uh, 
um, growth, even ovulation, all that shit stops because in a life or death situation, those things are wildly unimportant. What's important is getting you out of that um, situation you're in. So the energy is sent to parts of the body to help you survive. And when you're under this chronic stress, you at a much you have a much higher risk of contracting diabetes. The elevated blood pressure plus the excess glucose, because you see that excess glucose, that high blood pressure is destroying the walls of your veins and arteries not only putting you at risk for diabetes, but a higher risk of heart attack and stroke. Stress is one of the reasons why many men are suffering from erectile dysfunction, ED. Either completely or partially, stress is a major culprit of that. Okay aches, pains, strains, migraines can be attributed to stress because when you get stressed, your natural response is to tense up your muscles and that's an attempt, yes, your body attempting to protect itself from breaks and sprains and overall injuries. This is a natural response that needs to be managed correctly because it has physiological um, it has a physiological impact it's not just psychological stress over time can kill you almost every part of your body is offended by this which leads me to this when you use herbs to address this issue. Many herbalists, just like doctors, make the mistake of simply treating the symptom. What am I talking about? A lot of people who suffer from chronic stress, a lot of times you all go to the lavender, the chamomile, verbena, so on and so forth, which, which is cool, it's excellent. But you have to understand, for the most part, you're just treating the psychological um, portion of stress. If you're an herbalist, you should be a holistic herbalist. Holistic means the whole thing. When you have some kind of ailment, some kind of issue in your body, you got to understand there's going to be collateral damage. Your body is a system. Everything works together. So you're treating chronic stress, not only do you need the lavender or the chamomile, you see, but you need herbs to um, address the other parts of the body because you remember, remember, when you're stressed out, blood flow, energy is pulled from very important bio processes and sent to parts of the body to help you get away, which means organs, tissues, muscles and cells are being slowly deprived of oxygen and nutrients because your blood is how it gets that. So, and on top of that, the blood flow to areas is hindered because of the obstructions being created in your body in the um, arteries and capillaries and veins due to the stress, due to the excess glucose, due to the cortisol, due to the high blood pressure. And this isn't what I think, this is science. This is the fight or flight response. This is the stress response. This is real life. So yeah, you wanna use the chamomile, but you wanna use, in addition to that, an herb high in iron because iron will help to redistribute oxygen to the rest of your body because uh, um, iron is oxygen's escort 
to every part of your body. Iron is also a cofactor for serotonin, which plays a major role in um, um, emotional stability. Okay, we want to use, in addition to chamomile and iron, so a good one to use in addition to a chamomile, uh, so the anxiolytic or the herb, anxiolytics are the herbs that help you deal with anxiety and stress, like um, lavender, damiana, verbenas, linden flower, chamomile. Those will help you deal, those will help you take the edge off. But then you use a plant like yellow dock or burdock because of the iron and because it will address your liver, which has been overworked because when the cortisol is put into the bloodstream, it acts on the liver to produce more glucose to be sent into the bloodstream to be used for energy to help you get away from whatever the fuck. You see, it, whatever perceived threat there is, even though it's not a real life threat, it's a perceived threat. You can't, you can't tell your nervous system otherwise. Stress is stress. So a burdock or a yellow dock would be excellent because it it'll do both. It'll give you the iron. It'll also address the liver. Okay. A cayenne, cayenne pepper would also help because. It will act as a vasodilator and I'm going to say vasodilator because there's many plants that's a vasodilator which means it opens up it opens up blood vessels okay vasodilate okay there's many plants that are vasodilators and you can use whatever one you want as long as it doesn't have any contraindications um, you want to use herbs um, like Odinlandia, um, garlic, ginger. See, ginger is a good one because not only does it act as a vasodilator, it also will address the digestive system. And the di digestive system suffers greatly during stress because... The, on the priority list of things to send energy to in a life or death situation digestive system is, is not on that list which is why when you stress you get heartburn indigestion indigestion okay it, it basically stops so ginger will address that ginger will address the immune system your immune system is suppressed during stress it lowers the amount of lymphocytes which is why you get infections and bugs and sicknesses after you've been stressed out after a stressful day week whatever okay your your immune system is not important in a life or death situation i keep saying life or death situation even though when you get stressed out it's not life or death but the way your body is responding it's responding like that because it can, it doesn't know the difference. This is an evolutionary response. It just happens. You want herbs that address the musculoskeletal system, which sea moss. See, sea moss is cool, but I'm going to tell you the sea algae is because there's the sea moss, there's bladder rack, there's dose, there's kelp. All of those are very nutritionally dense. And honestly, I think dose, D-U-L-S-E, is red. It's a red algae. All sea mosses are algae. It's not a moss. They're very nutrient dense. Very nutrient dense, and it's going to supply you with not only um, minerals and phytochemicals for your musculoskeletal system, it's also gonna supply uh, electrolytes, electrolytes, electrolytes. You are an electric body, okay? Your nervous system, which is how you interact and um, uh, interpret your world, 
is electric. Your every time your heart beats is because of an electric impulse. And the electrolytes help you to conduct electricity. Okay, the calcium, magnesium, potassium. Okay, the electrolytes. So you want to use those because you better believe that your nervous system is being destroyed because of chronic stress. <laughs> okay. Um, and also it has copper. So you want to, you can use like a um, uh, pine leaves, um, saw palmetto, because they will have copper in them. Uh, pine leaves will have copper and boron which will address the brain. The brain has been, and because of chronic stress, it will shrink an area of your brain called the prefrontal cortex, which is involved with learning and memory. It will also inflame a part called the amygdala. The amygdala is responsible for um, the processing of emotions and when it becomes inflamed, you become more receptive and susceptible to stress. Okay, uh, I can go on and on. You name a system of the body, I'll tell you how stress has offended that system or that part of the body. Okay. I think that's it for the most part. Um, I hope you guys pull some value from that. I hope you can improve the quality of your lives with this what I just told you. Um, yeah, man, start managing this stress better because it will kill you. Peace.